There are several reasons that the Pope only takes Swiss for the Vatican Guard, which is in fact a real discrimination towards other Catholic people, actually. The first reason is that the first Germanic tribe to collaborate with Rome was the Alemannic tribe to whom the Swiss belong, who speak Swiss German, which is an Alemannic dialect. So the alliance Rome-Switzerland already exists since 2000 years and the Vatican is a part of nowadays Rome. Therefore, the Switzerland-Vatican covenant, which is a covenant of hatred and murder, with those Alemannic tribes incorporated in Caesar's army, together murdering the Celts of Europe and even those who lived in the Alps called the Celtic tribes of the Helvetics. So here you can see, this is the Alps here. They were the first Germanic tribes and even other maps where you can only see this part here taken by the uh, collaborating with the Romans. Here are the Saxons, they were probably the last ones who collaborated with Rome, therefore they had to be in the eastern part of Germany under Russian control because they, um, they still don't uh, obey that much uh, compared to the western Germans like here. So here is Switzerland, the first one who collaborated. That's why the Pope's guard is Swiss, one of the reasons actually. There are more. And after Rome, the Swiss mercenaries continued to murder for the European fair aristocracy, and one and a half million Swiss mercs did so over 500 years through the Dark Ages and finally burned all those European women as witches on the stakes for Rome and the Vatican. So this Swiss mercenary period for the king started after the aristocratic Templars founded Switzerland in 1291. And then there's the reason of the pharaohs mixing with the northern uh, European Haunabu sea peoples even before Rome. So this alliance with Rome and the Swiss extends over thousands of years and over at least four periods. So the Alemannic tribes collaborating with Rome betrayed the other Germanic tribes of Europe because they were already mixed with the pharaohs through the early Haunabu period. This is why the Swiss have always been the backstabbers of Europe and the European peoples and now leading to a successful rise of the extreme right through Swiss emissaries teaching the other European right-wingers to be patient and how to use the democratic structures to gain power over police and army just as they taught their agent Mr. Hitler. The fantastic results are and democratic successes of the Swiss SVP Nazi party showing a dangerous example for the rest of the European right-wingers of how to do it. The Alemans were the first traitors of Northern Europe. That's why the Swiss-Rome alliance still exists through the Pope's Swiss Guard today. The Pope's Guard is both an army and a police force, as it used to be a big army, which is now more like a police force just as the Swiss mercenaries for the kings were armies against other kings and police forces against its own people at the same time. Yes, the Swiss mercenaries laid the foundations of today's police with their octagon badges all being part of the Swiss-Rome connection, just as the Pope's guard. Well, here you can see. They did it for five centuries. Well, I mean, this is official. It, it is much longer, actually. Five centuries. Right, you can read the whole article. I'll put in the links below the film for you. There we go. Just bunch of pause. They were very brutal. Extremely brutal. I mean, this is Blackwater and, and SS to combine together, you know. So, here it says, you know, one, one and a half million Swiss mercenaries served in foreign armies between the 13th and 19th centuries. Some of them deserted. Well, they, st they stayed there, you know, they integrated and they became the police. 25% to 40 never returned. So they stayed there. That's why I'm telling you, the police... The Octagon Police are Swiss, 
first in Europe, in France, in Germany, in Holland, in Spain, everywhere. And then they went to the US and Canada. And there are one million Swiss living in the US with, this, with a US passport. I'll show it to you later. I mean, I mean, this is them. The facts are here. This is them, all right. This is them. They're the ones we're looking for before they come looking for us again. It's amazing the, the logistics and means of communications they already must have had in those days. Getting 1.5 million Swiss Octagon police mercs over to where they should be and serve some king or aristocrat. And of course, in those days, in the Middle Ages, they couldn't just fly home for the weekend or take a train. And so many got themselves wives, mixed with locals, had offspring and stayed. Or they even had some sisters of Isis from the motherland come over. So one and a half million men are real many, especially in the Middle Ages, policing the Europeans for the old world order, being the king's knight with an octagon badge, having lots of offspring in their millions, continuing in the king's ranks slowly transforming into what today we know as the police. And as a fact, many policemen take over the tradition from their fathers, often being in Freemason lodges or others, thus not forgetting where they originate from and who they really are. Coming to the point why a policeman from your country seems to get better along with a policeman from another country than you and the policeman from your country, with whom you can never have a decent conversation and who seems to be so different from all the other people you know from your country that it is hardly believable that he is a fellow countryman and more feels like another species. The more they ill-treat you and in the US someone gets shot by them every single day and even gets away with it. And how the entire European police rounded up all the European Jews, their children and Europe's resistance fighters and handed them over to their Gestapo pals during World War II, lamenting after the war that they didn't have a choice or they themselves would have been sent into the gas chambers when refusing orders. A plain lie, of course, and nicely premeditated by Octagon or Tavistock. These are the king's men still today, and they have their blue worldwide army over mankind now, and more and more militarizing, just as in the early days of being the king's army and their police at the same time. Their uniforms are blue with gold-plated badges with octagon shapes because blue and gold are the colors of the king and the pharaonic royal dignity just as the mask of King Tut, Tutankhamun. One and a half million Swiss were the king's police then for the feudal old world order and they still are today for the new world order, only more hidden as everything in the new world hidden went into stealth mode. This is why cops kill us, shoot on cardboard targets with our faces on it, and are impossible to have a normal conversation with. They are, in fact, a foreign power in our midst who came from the Alps long ago, and they know it. During the war, the Germans had several police battalions in the Einsatzgruppen, as the Hamburg, Hamburg Police Battalion 101. And there are no rangers, who never engage in real bravery and combat against the enemy in battle, but who came behind the real army as a second wave of octagon mass murderers assassinating millions of defenseless civilians in the eastern countries by machine gunning even children and pregnant women in a big sandpit 
and often bury them alive or half alive and still breathing. And after the war, these policemen went back to work and no one ever asked a single word, just as these Swiss mercenaries were known and renowned for their brutality as rape, drinking blood and dipping their boots into the belly's fat to impregnate them. And they never stopped doing so, and their descendants are still there today. I mean, who can do this and murder millions of children? Well, only tradition of thousands of years of mercenaries can. And I know how ruthless the Swiss are towards children and see how they have been terrorizing my children for 17 years. Yeah, read the whole article. I mean, this is police. This is octagon. These are the descendants of the Swiss mercenaries who were all over Europe and stayed. And they're still the king's knights. The Octagon Blue Army killing us. And it's coming up very soon again. You can feel it coming. And the longer our tormentors continue, the more I see and find out who they really are. As if some ancient universal law has locked me in here. That crime against humanity will not be without some kind of echo. The echo of immense suffering and sorrow carrying under its wings the intel of how to defeat the beast where the word is mightier and the universal law will come back at them and stop these monsters and their endless crimes against humanity. There will be a price tag on it this time waiting for you Swissies. So here we can see, we can read in German in this, uh, from this year in a German speaking newspaper it says Gewalt Pastur Schweiz, that violence is a part of Switzerland. It's like sort of in their genetic structure because of thousands of years of mercenary uh, business and killing all over Europe. I mean, I mean, th th this, this is a known fact that all the mercenaries, all the mercs, they came from Switzerland. Violence is their thing. It's a part of their character. And especially here, here in this area where I'm living. And this is going on for 17 years. So this article is in German because it's, it's very hard to find anything about Switzerland because I really tried to seal it all up, you know. But there's more coming up in English. So this is in German. It's, it's in their genetics, it says, you know. I can state that, that's true. The lies, the violence, you know, the... the. Well, here's one more, it says Franz Rudolf Frisching. He was a colonel in the Swiss Guard in Holland. A, uh, a, a Swiss merc in Holland, in the Low Countries. They were everywhere. Policemen and um, army mercenary in 1785 I put I put the link in the, uh, in the video so today the Swissy managed to erase another video of mine again telling us that there is a lot of explosive truth in this video which they don't they, which they want to hide from mankind so please everyone copy download and re-upload with your own titles so Octagon won't succeed their evil plans and hide their wicked intentions. Long live the US First Amendment. The Europeans didn't want to serve in the king's army that much, neither in the king's military nor the king's police, which was the same in those days. Most Europeans thought, why well, you die in a war, right? So this is why military conscription got installed everywhere after and during the French Revolution of 1790. And before that, the Swiss mercs were the king's killers all over Europe, especially from the 13th till the 19th century, but in reality even much longer when counting the time in the Roman legions, until they invented criminal Nazi banking 
and the Bank of International Settlements later on. Though so immediately in 1291, when the Templars founded their utopia in the Alps, they started to lend money to the European kings, mostly for warfare. And with this wealth accumulated, plus the pillaging of Europe, real Swiss Nazi banking could start in the 19th century, thus officially ending the long tradition of Swiss mercenaries all over Europe. But by then, they were already integrated all over. And here we can witness the Swiss relationship with the nobility and Europe's pharaohs, always been serving in the king's army police, who know who who now come who now come and ski in some holiday resort in the Alps, own a few chalets there and have uh, have some safe bank accounts in octagon of the Nazi Templars. And this is why Switzerland can do as it likes and doesn't have to abide any law, either international nor their own laws, which they don't keep. Thus, the fair aristocracy, old world order and new world order still showing their gratitude for Octogon's loyal service to nobility's pharaohs, without which the conquest and slavery of the European peoples could never have come true and executed. The Swiss can do what they want and never get punished in their perfect dictatorship where they enjoy controlling humanity with their banks and bogus Geneva-based NGOs. They enjoy crushing people with their mercenaries as today's Blackwater that provides a real joy to the Swiss heart. And these are the origins of the worldwide Octagon Blue Army against humanity, where spy orcs as the CIA, MI6 or KGB were never assigned against other spy orcs from other countries, as they tell us, but against the people and their own citizens instead. And when the kings became masons and the knights became the police, this octagon army killed and murdered, while they themselves repro reproduced enormously, while others as the Jews, Gypsies and European peoples were exterminated. And this is why they need more and more taxpayers' money for more and more police. Because they have so many descendants now who also need a job and don't want to work a single day. They use false flags, ops and the media to attain this goal and parasite upon humanity with the king's worldwide blue octagon army of Swiss origins. And now, in fact, the whole world has a universal Swiss Pope's God roaming the streets looking for victims whom they can handcuff, or even worse. By the way, not paying taxes is illegal, and you go to prison for it if you don't pay any taxes. Under one exception, if you don't have any money and you don't have any income, then you can't pay any taxes. So me, Sean Ross, of this video, I have no income, so I don't pay any taxes. I don't have to have a bad conscience, there's no cops wages I pay, no wars I finance. So the best thing is, you know, don't do anything anymore. I wanted to work here, they didn't give me a working permit, they terrorized me, and uh, now it's okay, yeah? So uh, I don't work, I have no income, so I can't pay any taxes. So well, suit yourself, you know? And when in 1792, during the French Revolution, the French found out they were being terrorized by a foreign power from the Alps serving the French nobility, the French massacred a Swiss regiment in La Tuilerie, for which the, Sw the Swiss still have monuments in the motherland to remember this. So, of course, these fine words about the Swiss, well, they are words by themselves, of course with an American writing, so this is probably the uh, the sleeper agents in uh, in the United States writing down this, eh? The octagon, fifth column in the US. I mean, nobody else, no, no French person would write this, eh? 
So, Le Tuieri, 10th of August, uh, 1792. Then, right after that, an enormous Swiss wave of terror descended upon the French called La Terreur, just chopping people's heads off randomly with guillotines, guillotines, and the French Revolution started anyway in 1789 with the storming of La Bastille, because Octagon's mercenary from Switzerland were torturing and holding French citizens prisoner in the dungeons of La Bastille. So up to this day, Octagon doesn't like the French very much, because it can be very unpredictable and rise up to their masters. So this is why France is being kept in semi-chaos with mass immigration for divide and rule. The Swiss mercs have always been the king's killers, even up to today explaining why US cops shoot so many defenseless people. In fact Switzerland is the most unneutral country in the entire world and they call the mercenary business a Reislauf from the German Reisen und laufen, to travel and to walk. Leading to the slogan of the French Foreign Legion, Marche ou Creve, which is from the Swiss Reislauf, to travel and to walk, because the, Swiss, the, the French Foreign Legion was founded by the Swiss and for the Swiss. I'll explain, to you, I'll explain it to you later. And just as the Nazis literally went into big business after the war and all taking leading CEO positions in big German Nazi companies who were all involved into crimes against humanity during the war, World War II, similar when the Swiss Mercs business seemingly stopped. They all went into huge banking business just as the Nazis, well, who were financed by the Swiss in the first place. So, well, it's always the same with those sect leaders. They are filthy rich, and their followers, they, they die poor. It's just another sect. All mercenary com companies are of Swiss origins by their fifth column sleeper agents. And even the French Foreign Legion is in fact Swiss and founded by the Swiss for the Octagon mercenaries in the first place, in a time where Swiss Merc business seemingly stopped, well, only because they went into a, an even more stealth mode, where it says in a bit weird English, the first commander of the, of the Foreign Legion was the Swiss Christoph Anton Stoffel from Arbon. And... Uh, There's some more here. This is about the uh, Foreign Legion. Here's some more about the first commander of the uh, a tough Swiss veteran, Colonel Stoffel. Uh, it's all Swiss, you know. Well, here's some more about the guy. Um, it says in German, he was the first commander of the French Foreign Legion, a Swiss officer. And he was a Baron, von Stoffel, a Baron, the Red Baron. Swiss. It was founded by the Swiss. I'll tell you more about it. Here's some more in German. The first commander of the French Foreign Legion was the guy from Turgau, the, the uh, Colonel Oberst Baron Christoph von Stoffel from Arbon. So it was Swiss. I mean, the whole mercenary business was Swiss. So of course the French Foreign Legion became Swiss, was founded by the Swiss. Well, and it still is. It still belongs to the Swiss. Believe me. Well, here are some more Swiss commanders. In the um, in the French Foreign Legion, they don't even talk about soldiers. <laughs> there must have been real many. He was a general, and a, uh, the 
the commandant of Lyon, a Swiss guy from Bern. And another one. Uh, even afterwards he went into the Swiss army. A captain. This one here. And here's another one. Well, there's loads of them. This guy, the, the commander of the Swiss during the Second World War, he even said, well, go into the French Foreign Legion and then come back and we'll take in the Swiss Army. Oh, man. Just like the, uh, like the, uh, the Pope's guard, like what they say. Uh, well, it's all Swiss. It's another Pope's guard, like. You know. The French Legion was founded in 1831. Here we can see it, March 10th, 1831. Uh, shortly after the French Revolution. Their first commandant was a uh, Swiss called Christoph Anton Stoffel, von Stoffel from Thurgau, who immediately put 10,000 Swiss mercenaries into the, the Swiss Foreign Legion from France. Now, how did this happen? Uh, here we can see that it was founded. Uh, it was founded by the, the French king Louis Philippe on March the 10th, 1831. So here again about the French Foreign Legion in Wikipedia. Uh, here the history, it says it was uh, found, created by Louis Philippe who spent 20 years in Switzerland and only six months after he was in, uh, in charge, being the King of France, he uh, installed the, um, the French Foreign Legion, or the Swiss Foreign Legion, and put a Swiss Colonel, von Stoffel, at the head of it, in 1831, March the 10th. And I think it was the 9th, August 9th, 1830, when he, became, when he came into power. And uh, if you look at the songs in the, in the Legion, the things, you know, where is it? These uh, slow, slow songs they they sing. It says pour les Alsaciens, les Suisses et les le, le Lorrains. So that would be, they only sing for these three here in English. That's the chorus. It says. Uh, Oh yeah, here. For, for the Alsatians, well they speak Swiss German in France, that's the eastern part of Switzerland, and they became, um, they murdered uh, the, the Swiss mercenaries, they murdered all the original um, uh, Gallo-Romanic uh, in, inhabitants of Alsace in the Thirty Year War, and then the Swiss, they all settled down. So that's why they speak Swiss German. As Alsace, it means all Swiss. Al Swiss. So it's only for the Alsatians who are Swiss and the Swiss. Remember the uh, the guy from the uh, the Auschwitz concentration camps I once filmed. While well, YouTube took it off immediately, uh, he was uh, he was of Swiss descent. He even knew it that 350 years ago. It's and so Alsatian. That's where they speak German. There are, there are two German dialects, Germanic dialects in France. Here they speak Alemannic, as in Switzerland. And in Lorraine, they speak a, uh, a Frankish dialect. So it's only for the Germanic or German speaking uh, um, peoples and the Swiss. Because it, it, it's, it's all Swiss. It's Swiss mercenary business uh, made by the Swiss and uh, with the Swiss colonel in the beginning, uh, the French king. It is Swiss. They always were the mercenaries, and even here in their songs it says, and um, and it says it says, for the Belgians there's none left. They are lazy shirkers. 
whatever that is. And um, well, they don't like the Belgians, but every all the Alemannic people, the Swiss, well, they are okay. Um, probably part of the Swiss discrimination. This one is good. Well, I, <laughs> me, Sean Ross, I'm not good. So I, I'm probably part of the Belgians. There's none left. I'm a lazy shirker. <laughs> well, I'm working very hard on my videos. It's the only thing is I can't get out of the house, and I, they didn't give me a working permit. So I mean, how can I work? And if they put me in a prison, how can I work? Well, I am working. I'm just not getting any money for it. Well, anyway, okay. Hey, Swissies. The French king Louis Philippe I, who ruled France from 1830 to 1848, well, here we can see that August 9th, 1830. Uh, remember the French Legion in March 1831, so only six months later, after he was in reign. Well, it remembers me of Herbert Hoover. Six months later, no, was it four months later or three months later? He founded uh, the, the the Bank of International Settlements was. Uh, founded or um, after the, uh, the the Black Tuesday, you know. So it was uh, 1830. So he had to go into exile because of the French Revolution, and later on because of Napoleon. Now, where do you think he went into exile? Oh yes, Switzerland of course, where his loyal king's killers and Octagon's mercenaries brought him to, where he stayed in exile more than 20 years, from 1793 to 1815, the year of Napoleon's defeat of Waterloo, upon which the Swiss annexed large part of eastern France of the Jura mountains until this very day. So over these 20 years the future French king and Octagon had plenty of time to talk, conspire and make unholy alliances, which was beyond doubt the very reason they made him king of France anyway. So yes, yeah, there's the exile here, 20 years. He went to Zurich and he went to Switzerland and uh, uh, Swiss neutrality, uh, he went to Basel here, uh, again Switzerland, and he was all over Switzerland for, for 20 years, the French king, and the first a Schaffhausen, everywhere. So as concluded with the Swissies, the very first thing he did when coming into power on August 9th 1830 was a few months later on March 10th 1831 install an army inside France for his loyal Swiss octagon pals and Swiss mercenaries called the the French Foreign Legion to control the people of France with a foreign power until this very day and he put the Swiss Colonel von Stoffel at the head And in fact, only this explains why France was divided into two parts during World War II with that Vichy regime by the traitor Marshal Pétain, who was undoubtedly of Swiss origins and a descendant of Octagon's Mercs and the King's Killers ruling over the French. And that's why in 1944 he tried to escape too, and well he did escape too, well yes, Switzerland. Here it says, Pétain, Suisse, here he is, the traitor, and um, this is in the Swiss newspaper of Neuchâtel. I went filming there, filming the uh, the sword of the uh, of the Shriners, remember? So this is uh, April the 26th, 1945. 
always Switzerland. They always go there where they think they're safe, and most of the time they are. Well, there it is again. In English, Petain escapes to Switzerland in 1945. Well, back to the motherland, hey? Just another one of those Swiss mercs, still today. Betraying the French people. So this is why the, the French they lose all their battles and all their all their wars because they they've been betrayed from the beginning. And this has been going on for hundreds of years. It started with the Swiss mercs for the French kings. I showed it here. And the French king that he made the he founded the French Foreign Legion with the Swiss the Swiss colonel with the Swiss, the, the, the first Commandant of the uh, Le Commandant du uh, Légion Étrangère. Well, it's all Swiss. The Merck business has always been Swiss and it always will be Swiss. I already showed you that Blackwater is Swiss, that the South African Mercs, they came from Holland, they were not Dutch, they were Swiss Mercs for the Dutch King. It's all Swiss. The whole police business, all the wars, the army, the SS, it's Swiss, believe me. So here's some information about military conscription, which dates back to the French Revolution in 1790. So that's just about 40 years before the, uh, the, the, the French Foreign Legion. So because of the conscription coming up all over Europe, uh, that was the end of the official, like, um, and the end of the kings, you know, the revolutions, all everywhere, and it was the end of the uh, of the official, like, Swiss mercenaries. So that's why they had to hide even more. In for the the next French king, when Napoleon was gone, so this uh, uh, Louis Philippe, who uh, came into power in 1830, so that's 40 years after the beginning of conscription. In a sort of a hidden way into a French, well, Swiss foreign legion. So this is very much related to the conscription coming up. And even the British Empire, you know, again the kings, the uh, the aristocracy, and even the British Empire had Swiss mercenaries in the British Swiss Legion of at least 2,200 men who were supposed to go and fight in the Crimean War in 1855. Not very long, 15 years after the... Uh, or 25 years after the creation of the French Foreign Legion. Because the Swiss have a large fifth column and Swiss settlers in the Crimea and the Ukraine. Now look at that, the Octagon from Octagon. Now doesn't that sound utterly awakening and ringing some bells concerning today's actualities in the Ukraine, World War III building up and Swiss President Didier Burkhalter being sent there all the time to talk with Mr. Putin, making secret plans against humanity. And here we can see the Swiss cross here. Like on the Swiss flag, the Templars thing, which we can see on Alex Jones's little bottles he's selling. Oh, there it is. I'll put in the links for you. Oh, there's some more. The British Swiss Legion, an octagon, and the same Alex Jones Swiss cross. Wow. There's some more. The British Swiss Legion. Oh, they still they're, they're still there. Maybe they were partly the SAS killing Irish people, eh? They didn't leave. Couldn't take an airplane in those days, see? Uh, the Octagon. Here yeah, the Octagon. British Swiss Legion. For whom? Well, for the crown. With the Templars cross on it. They were everywhere. Each king, every arist aristocrat, had a uh, 
at the Swiss Legion, Swiss mercenaries. Yeah, a colonel at the Swiss Artillery School in Bienne. It's uh it's really a lot. They are the war makers. They never stopped. You think they just stopped it after thousands of years? Oh come on. Of course they didn't. They're into killing business. Very brutal. No mercy. That's why they uh, they like to have them. The Swiss is. Huh? Now you see this this Swiss aristocrat and and colonel or general. He was in Ireland. He was in India. It wasn't even maybe not even the English killing the Irish and their children. They're the ones who always did it. All these wars. The Swiss are everywhere. Installing fifth column sleeper agents and go for the key positions. In Russia, Crimea, Ukraine, Brazil, Uruguay, Hungary, Bessarabia, France, the US, Germany, etc. etc. And having their non really integrating Nueva Helvetia, Pequeña, Suizas communities everywhere. Here you can see, in America, in the US, there's almost one million of them. Uh, well, I mean, of whom they know, they are of Swiss descent. There's probably five or six, or even more. In Canada, 150,000. Well, etc., etc. Uh, Argentina, 300,000. Bra Brazil. Uh, they're, they're, they're everywhere. In Europe, in France, total of worldwide seven million, two million in the, they call it the diaspora, and um, they came everywhere. But if you want to go into, into Switzerland, oh man, they tr they they come with their racist SVP Nazi party, and uh, they 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 treat you as a subhuman, arrest you all the time, and. Oh, that's Switzerland, eh? So this is Swiss humor. Look, somebody puts a knife in the uh, in the um, in the bicycle of my uh, of my youngest son here. It's through both sides. Nice, eh? So this is a knife in the tire at the side. It's a bit older now because um, um, it's been done already some time ago. And this is the part which doesn't touch the street. You know, this here is the part that touches, touches the street and it's still a new tire. So some funny Swiss terrorists, they put a, a knife in it here. Maybe the guys who are constructing it next, next door. Uh, well, this is Switzerland. A bunch of very sneaky, lying, and hateful people. That's Switzerland. My youngest son. So this website is called uh, called uh, Swiss People on Wikipedia. Yeah, they even in Vietnam, in Asia everywhere taking over societies if they don't change look <laughs> they don't change they don't integrate they're talking about foreigners Swiss diaspora they're talking about immigrants in Switzerland oh they have to integrate well they don't mean integrate they mean obey everything which wait which we tell you but they here even in russia in bessarabia in the ukraine and in the crimea well, i'll show it to you later in singapore sri lanka of course the united states
So th this this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, two million officially. I mean, uh, that's that's only the last hundred years, maybe. But that must be, that must be. I don't know, twenty million worldwide. An octagon is ruling the world. I tell you. So about the subject of Swiss emigration, it says here ausgewandert in seven, seven Jahrhunderten, over seven centuries. It means emigrated. They're all Swiss, and this is a book uh, from uh, this year. Look, 2014. They know it. They're everywhere. I haven't read it yet. You know so. So seven centuries. 700 years ago, there was what well, I mean, since Switzerland was founded you know, by the Templars, and it all started like, uh, yeah. So, this is a, a new book, I haven't read it yet. Oh, so. They know, they know it, and they're proud of it everywhere. And if you come here. In this country, oh man, they treat you so bad. And here, look, they're smiling, you know, oh yeah, we, they were well treated, you know. Yeah. The octagon suitcase. Domination of the world in there. Yeah, look, Swiss emigration to Russia, number 50,000, well, it's probably more. Uh, in the in the 18th century, they went to Bessarabia. Well, Bessarabia, that's the southern part of uh, of the Ukraine, and uh, a part of uh, Moldavia as, uh, as well. They went to the Russian Empire. Uh, they're, they're everywhere. It's, I think Putin he's very likely to be Swiss. Because they take all the, all the uh, the key positions. That's why he gets along so well with the Swiss president Didier Burkhardt. Maybe they speak like the uh, the Korean guy Kim Jong Un. Maybe they even speak Swiss German together. I would not be surprised at all. The chances are very very high. These are the ones behind it all. Yeah. So this is in Wikipedia. I put it in the. Uh, uh, in the links under the film. Swiss diaspora, the Swiss Americans, well I already showed you this in some of my other films so I'm not going to repeat this, I told you about Germany and uh, yeah. I don't know if this is true that Putin's father fought for the Nazis, well, it looks like Putin but that would explain a lot that Putin is uh, uh, like it's a like a Cossack, I think, in the Nazi uniform. That Putin is uh, talking with the Swiss president of Octagon, and he's uh, he liberated the oligarch Khodorkovsky, and all these sort of things, you know. Um, I mean, if this is true, then he is Octagon, which I think he is. I mean, I mean you won't become president or a prime minister if you're not part of the gang. It simply doesn't happen, right? They just want the Russians to die, the, the ordinary people, they want the Americans to die, and every time we become more and more stupid, the best people, they die, and there's no more like, hey, some life is about like this and this and this. So we, we, we're getting more and more stupid and we're getting like raised by TV and the mainstream media and, um, and Tavistock, you know. Well, there's the rest of the story, I'll put it in the, uh, I'll put it in the link for you. As a historian, I can't verify this if it's true. The rest is true. The rest is history, there are facts. This I don't know. But it might explain a lot. If not everything. And of course, if he's octagon fighting for the Germans and all that, I mean, Putin is Swiss. That's why the Ukrainian war for the Swiss colonies in the Crimea, Bessarabia, and then the Ukraine, uh, the, the Zurich Valley, and, and all this, uh, it explains everything. 
talking with the Swiss president and taking uh, taking his orders. So here's Bessarabia. Well, it's not in Arabia; it's in Europe. But it probably has it has to do with the Ottoman Empire. So here's the Ukraine, the Crimea. I show that to you too. The Swiss emigrated here as well. This is Romania, Moldavia as well. So this is Bessarabia. So no wonder. I mean, uh, this this oligarch Yanukovych, the former president and a criminal of uh, of the Ukraine, he had a Swiss chalet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, all the workers there, they were Swiss, and they all spoke German. Well, he's one of them. They went to Bessarabia, they went to Russia, the Ukraine, they're everywhere. I'm showing it to you, it's all in the internet. Believe me. So, this is Bessarabia. Well, I'll put in the links as well. It's interesting, it's very interesting. It's, it's about the Dutch up people and the... Uh, the Scythian people as well. And well. Well, here's some more. Uh, colony uh, in they call it the Zurich Valley, Zurichtal, by Swiss immigrants. And um, so the whole Ukraine war, it, it's about the Swiss, believe me. They they done it, just as they finance Adolf Hitler. They behind it. And Zurich and, and Mr. Putin. He's one of them. Very, very likely he's one of them. So here it says, uh, to emigrate from Switzerland to the Crimean Peninsula. I mean, the, the, the thing, in the, the, the voting and the war in the Crimea, Crimea, it's about the Swiss. They're probably, I don't know, maybe hundreds of thousands must be there. And... Um, this is what it's about, and if they don't get what they want, well, they're gonna they're gonna give us another another world war. I tell you, they're working on on the, on the third world war, and they did the first and the thirty year war. They they're all over. They they're all over in it. So the Ukraine Ukrainian problems, oh, they're Swiss made, just like the rest. I'll, I'll put it in the links, of course. Uh, some Swiss houses there. Oh, what do you know, eh? Whoa, man. Uh, they even changed their names from Ile into Yago Yagovlevna. Well, that sounds Russian, doesn't it? Hey, so you don't see that. So you know, it's not that obvious anymore. They're they're gone. This is what a fifth column is like. And as I've already shown you in my other films about uh, the the fifth column in in America, they call themselves uh, the Swiss diaspora, the Ausland Schweizer, the fifth Switzerland. This is where the word the fifth column is from, the sleep agents. I mean, they even made the word, you know, fifth column. I mean, nobody understands it, you know. Why well, in those days now everybody does, or most of the people. But in the beginning, the fifth column or the fifth Switzerland, well, who knew what it meant? This is in German, the Krim, the Swiss Schweizer, Zurich Zurichtal. Well, you can all read it yourself. I mean, they, these are solid proofs. They are everywhere. I put in the links for. Oh, this is going too fast. Yeah, they're everywhere. Oh, okay. Oh, here's some more about the Swiss in Russia, Crimea, in German. Well, did you know this, Mr. Putin? Well, I bet you do, eh? You're one of them. Going for the key positions, like Eisenhower, like Herbert Hoover, like Gay Edgar Hoover. Yeah. General Costa is all Swiss. 
This is Octagon Rolling the World. Jetzt says Schweizer Wurzeln kaum mehr sichtbar. The Swiss roots are invisible. I bet they are. It says Schabo, ein Schweizer Kolonie, a Swiss colony in Bessarabia. And again, you know, don't try and come here. You know, they treat you so bad. While they are everywhere on the, in the world. And taking key positions, making wars, financing wars, Swiss banking, Nazis. The Ukraine, well, the Ukrainian Nazis, uh, whom they are talking about. Ah, they are Swiss. Believe it. Hey, Mr. Putin, the State Department, if you don't know it, well, have a look at this. Here's some more about the Swiss in the Ukraine. And it says, uh, well, it's, it's, it, it means they, they disappeared, you know, well, they, they, they became invisible, you see. I'll put in the link. Now, there's even some Swiss with a Twicky, Vladimir Twicky. <laughs> Well, here's some more. The Vladimir, a Russian name, Tsviki. You know, the name is still Swiss. It says they disappeared. Well, I, I bet they disappeared, you know. There's even an email here. They are the Nazis of the Ukraine, believe me. They're the Nazis in Europe. And before we all kill each other again in another world war, so I hope some people look at this here, so we can stop it and get the real guilty ones, you know. Well, I put in the link, so you just read it yourself. This is in German. Of course, there's a lot more in German because, I mean, that's their language. And even the Swissies who speak French or Italian, they are Swiss Germans. I mean, look at the phone book. They're all Swiss German names. Well, I bet you won't find any more Swiss German names or they'd probably change them. Uh, in, in the Crimea. They are the ones behind the turmoils in the Ukraine. Believe me, the Swiss banks are going down. They have, they, they have billions to pay to the Americans and, and they're going to take them all down, the IRS. This time they're doing a good job, the IRS and the NSA, because it needs the NSA, you know, because it's the most invisible crime of all, the financial crime. And this here, what the Swissies are doing. So, um, I don't like governments, I don't like police, I don't, you know, but um, only the NSA can, can look behind the, uh, behind the screens. And so I hope they, they're watching this. Well, it's all Swiss names here, you know, some of them. Yeah, so these are the ones behind it. I'll put this in the links for you as well. I uh, just put in the links everywhere. Well, this is uh, Sw it says Swiss colonies in Hungary. Wow, also in Hungary. And you remember the Nazi, the Nazi party in Hungary during the war, um, killing all the Jews and giving it to the Nazis. Uh, they call him the Pfeilspitzler. The, these guys with an arrow. And now the, the rise of, of fascism in Hungary, <laughs> it's enormous. Uh, they, they, even, they even have concentration camps again, you know. The Swiss winter, I, I can even show it to you, it's, it was in the newspaper. The, Sw the Swiss Nazi party, the SVP Nazi party, they went there a couple of weeks ago to the, to the Hungarian concentration camps. Now, in 2014, Nazis now in Hungary, Nazis then. Well, they're the ones behind it. It's all Swiss. You know it if you live here. You know, I've been here for 70 years. I know how they... I've never seen so much hatred in my whole life. I've never seen so much evil, so, so many lies, and so organized. So much Nazism and fascism. and uh, it, it, Evil. It, it's pure evil. I know them now, and they're everywhere. Yeah, look, the Swiss in Brazil, 
Well, they look very Brazilian, don't they? Huh? Helvetia everywhere in Sao Paulo, a Swiss colony in Sao Paulo. Well, it's the biggest town in, in, in Brazil, I think it is. I'll put in the links, read it yourself. Of course, there's, as I told you, there's more in, uh, in German. And uh, everywhere. Oh, Swiss colony in Uruguay. Yeah, look, this is 2014, it says. Well, of course, Uruguay. That's what where Klaus Barbie, the butcher of Lyon, of the Gestapo, that's where he went to, didn't he? To Uruguay. It's full of Nazis. And I already showed you about Argentina and even the, the President Kirchner, that they are Swiss, of Swiss descent, and the rest, in the US. Uh, the, they are the ones, you know, they, they are destroying our earth, all these wars. They are the ones, believe me. They are the ones who are everywhere. And they don't integrate, look. They don't integrate, look at them. In, in Uruguay. Everywhere, Nueva Helvetia, Colonia Suiza, uh, Pequena Suiza, all over. Oh, here in Africa, Swiss colonies in Africa. All well, these guys are everywhere. I already told you about South Africa, how the uh, the Swiss mercs, they went to the low countries, worked for the king, killed killed some cloggies there. And they were the ones who went to South Africa. And now they're killing Iraq, they're killing Afghanistan. South African mercs are already in the Ukraine. But they are Swiss. And they know it. They know it. Black water, eh? From Schwarzwasser in Bern with the with the, with the bare feet. Well, read it yourself. Well, this is also in German. But I mean, you, you can all read this here. Swiss colony, Schweizer colony, yeah, Africa. Well, if an African comes to Switzerland, well, they kill him. You know that they, they are. They, are. They, they, they just lie things together. I'm an African. They lie things together to put you in prison, you know, for nothing. I spent one year in prison, in a high security prison, a political prisoner, for nothing. They lie things together, you know, and they, they, they are 14,000 immigrants that have disappeared here the last few years. They disappeared. Huh. Incinerated, like in, a, in an oven, I tell you. And in 1763, the Swiss mercenary colonel Louis-Henri Fougeot knocked down a slave uprising in Holland. Well, I told you that the slave trader ships, they were the Templar ships of Switzerland. They owned them. I already told you in some of my other films. And he was the head of the King's Killers for the Dutch nobility, whose regiment, de Meuron, was sent to Cape Town later on in 1783 as I've already explained to you in my other films, how the notorious South African mercs are in fact not Dutch or real Boers, but they are real Swiss octagon. And they are the real white man killers doing so, even against the white race itself. They are the biggest killers of Europe, and all the world's polices and armies still work for the king and pharaoh's nobility. It says, yeah, from Geneva, <laughs> where all the so-called NGOs, peace organizations are from. <laughs> the United Nations, the Red Cross, and all the rest, you know. So he was a colonel, Louis-Henri Fourgeot. He knocked down the slaves in Holland. Yeah, Niederschlagung. He knocked them all down. So, um... Giving, uh, giving the Dutch people a bad name, who had in fact nothing at all to do with slavery. It was all Swiss, except for the so-called Dutch aristocracy or a bunch of pharaohs anyway. So it's the pharaohs and Octagon. Well, I mean, Octagon was founded by the Templars who are of aristocratic origin. They were no monks. 
those Templars. So they just go to another country and do it over there. So uh, Swiss can Switzerland can keep its uh, neutrality swindle clean and neutral and innocent uh, face. You know, uh, yeah. The sound, the sound of money. It's not the sound of music, but the sound of money. Even in Finland, during the 1939 Finnish-Russian Winter War, Octogon's emissary colonel and Swiss senator Henri Va Valoton was sent to spy and learn what was going on, his presence leading to the burning of northern Finland by the Nazis later on. And no Finnish names at all present on key positions in the Finnish army. Marshal Freiherr von Mannerheim, Swiss-German aristocracy. General Ostermann, a Swiss-German name. General Usch, of Swiss-German descent. And General Oquist, Swedish name. For which they were called the three O's, their name starting with an O. The O of Octagon and the O as a circle and three rings of power of the Vesica Pitches and the Holy Trinity of Isis, Horus and Seth. So this is the book I have. This is, you see the sash, the pharaonic sash he's having there, like the pharaohs and all the aristocrats. So this was the head of the Finnish uh, forces. Uh, Freiherr von Mannerheim. Well, what a Finnish name, eh? Yeah, von Mannerheim. They even wrote this for the Swissy. I guess that's an octagon, isn't it? Well, anyway, there's the uh, the Templar's cross. So this was the uh, the book. Uh, the book is from 1940 as well. So this guy was a senator and a Swiss colonel. Yeah, in Zurich. Now the book is from 1940, Zurich. And this guy, he went and uh, he went and spy for Octagon in Finland in Swami. Well, there he is with the other Octagon members. Not very typical Finnish name. Ush. He's uh, at least his his parents are Swiss. Osterman is the Swiss name, they call him the three O's, you see here? Then Drei O. Well, there they are, seeing his pals up there. So now that's all from the book. And, uh, I mean, we die. The Finnish people die, the Russian soldiers die, and they just say, well, you go and fight them, kill the other ones. And what a stupid thing anyway, to give an order to kill somebody else. <laughs> it's a stupid thing to do, isn't it? So here it says that the author of the book is here, so probably this guy here. He looked like a Gestapo agent. He probably was later on. And... Uh, so that was in, during the Winter War. And this sort of neutral country goes to, uh, to see when, and, uh, where the wars are and spy. Well, that's not a very neutral thing to do, is it? Well, it would be interesting for Finnish people to put these pictures in, the, uh, in Google. I don't, I don't know how to do that. So uh, Maybe nobody knows them, these pictures here in Finland because they are Swiss pictures so that's von Mannerheim Freiherr hmm. aristocracy the pharaohs we die we shoot we bleed and they just eat and give the orders some more the Winter War in 1939-1940. The Russians they suffered very high losses. 
and history says that the, the, the Ruskies, they lost this war. Well, I say the Pharaohs had just had to get rid of a couple of Ruskies before the war with the Germans started. That's what it was all about. That's the Horus Matrix. I mean, how can Finland win over Russia? But that's the same myth as Switzerland was too strong for the, for the Germans to take. While Switzerland had five tanks at the beginning of the war and the Germans had 75,000 or something. <laughs> it's just another lie. Though the Finnish are like real good fighters, apparently, and they did military service. They learned it all in the Russian army anyway. That was part of Russia before. They got taught by the Russians. <laughs> it's the same with the, and in the Russian and the, the Prussian army as well, the Finnish. Well, there's some more. It's an interesting book. I was lucky, lucky to get it. Probably one of the last ones around here. And it gives a deep inside picture, you know, what Octagon is really doing. Well, it must have been a terrible war, though. You know, it's not the other soldier, the enemy, but also the, uh, the snow and the weather conditions. It's probably the hardest conditions to fight. Like desert warfare, jungle warfare, and polar warfare. Well, this is the hardest. I hope my Finnish friends, they uh, from YouTube, they enjoy the pictures of their ancestors. So this guy, a, G a general commander of the Finnish army, he's Swiss. Look at him, he's Swiss. And the author even knows it, that the Templar's cross, he puts a signature on it. And, uh, yeah, Lennart Usch. Usch is a Swiss name, here it says. The Abstammung nach ein Schweizer, which is the same thing Wikipedia says. So, what, what, what's a Swiss general like doing in the Finnish army? No, well, it's Octogon. They're everywhere, even in Finland. They have Swiss colonies. Uh, it reminds me of the Falklands. <laughs> yeah, some more Falklands. <laughs> well, they're Russians. They just, they just told them, well, you go there, you go there. <laughs> so they died, you know. Uh, you must be stupid taking orders, you know. The only orders I take is my conscience, and that's it. No orders. But the Finnish population, they must have been real scared. Russian army standing at the borders. But the head she had never even wanted to take Finland. If they would have wanted, they would have done it. If the pharaohs would have wanted to take Finland, then it would have happened. But it was not in their plans. It's funny, me being a South African with a very rare book, a Swiss book, showing pictures of, uh, of the, uh, the, the Finnish-Russian winter war, which probably no, no Finn even has. <laughs> uh, what is that, Helsinki? No, uh, well, it's Destiny, eh? Well, Red Cross. What was that? Swastika on it. Jeez. 
uh, yeah, some swastika thing for a nurse in the Finnish war. Well, that's weird. Should analyze this. The swastika red cross light in the Finnish Russian winter war. Well, it says General Lennart Ush, a uh, general in the uh, during the Winter War and of the Finnish army, and uh, he was born to parents of Swiss origin. It says this is Octagon. Yeah. Here they would never give a in Switzerland they would never give an immigrant such a high position. Yeah. Only to the Swiss. And later on, I mean, these guys they uh, they invited the Nazis in in in, in uh, Finland. Yeah. So that's in Wikipedia. Put in the links for you. And here's the other one, Orquist, the other one of the three O's. He got trained in the uh, the Royal Prussian Army, the 27th Jäger Battalion, against the English, against the Americans, against the French. So, well, well this is a Swedish name. There are, there, there are no Finnish names in the... Uh, <laughs> among the, the, the Finnish officers. Uh, well, this is the uh, the Lodge of the Nine Sisters, Les Neuf Sœurs, which I also filmed here in Bern. And uh, after I, I uploaded it, they uh, they, they took off the, uh, the name from the doors very quickly. And they were found established in Paris in 1776. And this is the, the year of the Declaration of Independence. And also when the Illuminati were founded in uh, Ingolstadt, in Bavaria, by Adam Weishaupt. And I tell you, these ones are far, far more dangerous than the Illuminati. They gave the, uh, the Statue of Liberty, the ISIS, to the, uh, to the Americans. Or to the ones, the pharaohs leading America, rather. I'd rather say. Very dangerous lodge. Also called the Nine Sisters of uh, Voltaire. Uh, remember in France this year I, f I filmed the uh, the Nine Obelisks in France. This one is also from France. The most dangerous lodge in the world I'd say. So this is the book. Looks very old. It's very interesting. It's all yellow and smells. It's a miracle. It survived. It survived a uh, some water flooding and and <laughs> a lot of other things. You know, it's still there. It must have been like that. Don't you think it's a coincidence? This book has a lion. Yeah, this is the symbol of the aristocracy and royal dignity of the pharaoh. The book's cover is in blue and gold as lapis lazuli on King Tut's royal mask or the blue uniform of Octagon's worldwide blue army with a gold Octagon badge pinned on it. Also showing nine pentagram flowers as in the Lodge of the Nine Circles and Lodge of the Nine Sisters. Plus the Muslim round sword Hanjar. Here it is of the Shriners and the Hanjar SS Division and filmed in Octagon in my Neuchâtel video. All in all in a coat of arms. Here it is, like on the Swiss Army knife. And why does it have two swords? One Templar sword or the Crusader sword and one Muslim sword. Well that means the Pharaohs here, this is the Pharaoh, the Lion the symbol of the uh, the aristocracy with the crown 
and uh, so it means they controlled both sides, the Crusaders and they controlled the Muslims, you know, the Hashashin and the Templars. This is what they always do and we, we have to die and they don't. They get, even, they get more and more power and we get more and more stupid as a farmed race. The, well, this is Octogon, the heart of evil, the hidden enemy of mankind with their sealed lips of conspiracy and secret smiles. Well, don't you think twice that this colonel doesn't know what he's doing and that he's not part of the, of the aristocracy of the pharaohs of Octagon? Well, don't you think that for a minute? I repeat, this is Octagon, the heart of evil, the hidden enemy of mankind with the sealed lips of conspiracy and secret smiles. On May 25th, and April 24th, 2014, some newspapers wrote about North Koreans receiving eight months military training in Switzerland, including shooting with assault rifles using standard NATO ammunition. Several North Koreans were trained for a period of eight months, which has cost the rich Swiss 160,000 Swiss francs in a GCSP program costing 120 million Swiss francs for 800 participants a year. GCSP stands for Geneva Center for Security Policy and is just one more of Octagon's NGOs to control the world. Yeah, there it is, the world. It's, it's, not, it's nothing less than the entire world. And this stripe here is part of the Vesica Pites. It's the circle meeting another circle, which could be here. And if you do like this is the other part of the other circle, like here, then you get the oval. So they give one part of the um, of the Vesica Pites, which is for organization, and and so they want to make the other part, which should be here. That's that's what it means. Well, look at it. Where knowledge meets experience. Well, they got a lot of experience, eh? That's Switzerland. This is Octagon. Well, here's another one. It says impartial, inclusive, influential. Well, that's arrogant, eh? Influential. So, what do they want to influence here, eh? Well, there's some more. They call the GCSP a peace call. That's why they go shooting with military assault drivers and invite all sorts of dictatorships whose dictators bring the wealth they stole from their peoples into Switzerland to the Swiss Nazi banks. I mean, why not invite representatives from other countries and play ping pong or volleyball instead of military training on firearms for better killing? If your NGO is a peace organization. Well, Swissies know that by inventing ping pong players, you most likely won't be able to lay the foundations of total control, big business and for war. And this is how Octagon steers the world and probably only invites their own Swiss sleeper agents of their worldwide fifth column. Uh, here it says, the Geneva Center for Security Policy. I put it all in the link so you can read the article, yeah. It was in more newspapers where when I wanted to film it, it wasn't on it anymore. So this one here is um, on the Stars and Stripes. Oh look, there's even no more place to put all the medals. I mean, what kind of a sick mind goes together with this here, what we can see here? Uh, yeah. This, what, what, what kind of a psychology is behind it? What kind of a character? I mean, this is sick. Yeah. Well, no doubt Octagon discusses new and old techniques about concentration camps for the North Koreans with uh, Switzerland's knowledge of the Nazi concentration camps. Well, if you have a peace NGO, NGO 
then why not make music together instead of army target practicing with our images on the targets anyway. So it's clear the whole peace NGO is a big Swiss lie again. Well do you think that in the evening they just discuss peace and some Swiss culinary specialities such as some Swiss melted dip cheese or what? It may rather be assumed the opportunist Swiss grasped the opportunity to ask Hey, we heard you had that bomb and we don't like the great US Satan either. Listen, you have the bomb and we have a lot of US tax dollars we don't want to give back. So maybe we can work something out. Like we have some Swiss, Pequena, Suiza, Nueva Helvetia territories in South and Central America where you can install some of the launchers not far away from the big US Satan. Well, what do you think? You want some more wine and melted dip cheese? And reality shows that the Swissies did the very same thing, attracting US billionaires not to pay their taxes in the US anymore. And Swissy has plead guilty to conspiracy for a US court this year. This is Octagon preparing World War III through their Swiss sneaky ways, just as Albert Pike, in reality a Swiss agent, predicted three world wars and Swissy is working on it, I tell you. Yeah, it says, the Swiss conspiracy. They're very, very capable of conspiracy. It's coming out now. This is not a clean country. This is what they do. They lie and there's conspiracy. You see, this is May 19, 2014. There's a lot of things. Uh, it's going faster and faster and faster. In the same week, uh, many things came out. And um, yeah, it's getting dangerous. They're getting very un unpredictable now. There are a lot of similarities between North Korea and Nazi Germany. They both like goose stepping, as you can see here. Both have concentration camps. Both leaders tell their people of how much they love their people, which is a complete tactical lie and the best way to win the people's trust. And both have the Alpine powers behind the scenes where Kim Jong-un even speaks Swiss German. And I wouldn't be surprised, surprised if Hitler did too. Swissies and their banks brought upon the Germans a dreadful economical crisis with hunger, poverty and starvation, miracul miraculously resolved by the Führer or leader whom they would die for afterwards. And they saw him as a god and Messiah, who delivered them from total misery, without understanding that these are octagons, ancient techniques behind. The same in North Korea, where Grandfather Kim Il-sung delivered the Korean people from the American aggressions initiated by Swiss sleeper agent President and General Eisenhower, who brought on octagons order the Cold War upon the world and totally misleading the American public through media psychological indoctrinations, false flags and plain lies. This is always setting innocent peoples up against each other while octagon of the Alps making a big buck. So the, these guys are, are, are the um, from the paper the Nazis of who came to the US uh, through the paperclip um, operations, you know, giving uh, the US a very bad name and setting peoples up against each other. But this is Octogon. Same thing happening now with Russia and the Ukraine and the Russian oligarchs and their Swiss bank, bank accounts greasing the war machinery, as we can see here. Putin is just as bad as Obama, setting peoples up against each other, and fascism rising in Europe after Swiss work behind the screens. So this is the oli oligarchs, you know, greasing the war machinery. They are jihadists, they, you know, they, they, they're sending in jihadists from, from, uh, from Chechnya, you know, to kill the Ukrainians, and 
Well, this this is what Putin really is like, and Obama. You know, they're all the same. The whole world is ruled by these pharaohs and their Swiss bank accounts and their oligarchs. There's also like Hitler, you know, and and Kim Jong Un, the guy you just saw on the on the horse, you know, the big hero. There are Russians who are ready to die for Putin because he gave him some work. He did. He took some measures against queers and you know not not showing their bottoms, you know, to to children like. But in fact, he doesn't care. He just wants to win the people's hearts. I mean, his grandfather and uh, or his father uh, was a cook for Stalin. He was born into the the this this aristocracy. He, he's he's part of the Tsars, you know. Wake up. So they're sending in jihadists, you know, for some money, and who want to kill some whiteies, you know. This is what they do. I mean, these are real slit throats, eh? So oh, yeah. So this is what Putin is like. All dictators. It's all the aristocracy. And it all comes back to octagon. So North Koreans come and train, shoot rifles and discuss in Switzerland for almost a year. And their dictator, Kim Jong-un, even speaks Swiss German, Octogon's language, which is not that easy to learn, because for doing so you must make a detour and learn German first. So it must be clear that Kim Jong-un is one of those Swiss fifth-column sleeper agents who speaks the mother tongue. So I'll show you the entire article. Well, there's a lot more. Speak Swiss German, can you imagine? Right. Yeah. I'll put the whole link in the uh, under the video with the links. I'll put the whole article in there. So, from 1993 till 2000, that's seven years, the Korean dictator got trained and schooled in Octogon, in a school in the Swiss capital of the Bear, called Bern, not very far from where we live, so I went filming there for you. You can read the whole article, put in the links. So I hear some more about it. I'll show you the school here, there's the name, I'll show it to you later. And this article was in the Daily Mail. So this here is the school where the uh, where the dictator of Korea went to school, Mr. Kim Jong Il, and this is the sporting ground where he used to play basketball. He was very into basketball. That's why uh, Mr. Rodman he visited him, like in Korea. So this is the uh, it's a quiet area here. It's next to a quiet sort of posh area as well. Kurnitz. It's all, it's part of Bern. So, why do you, and he spoke Swiss German. You know, this is what I've been talking about. This is the Swiss fifth column. They can be Chinese, they can be Russian. They're everywhere, the Swiss. Everywhere. So he looks Chinese from the outside, or Asian. But he's not, he's Swiss. What do you think, a Korean? They, they say they hate the world and the Western world, most of all. And why did they go to a school in the, in, the, in the most western part of, like, of the western world, Switzerland? Why do they do this? You know, it's all a lie. Just like Mr. Hitler, he lied about uh, loving the Germans. Well, it's the same with Mr. Kim Jong-un and his father, Kim Jong-il. You know, they say, well, we love the Korean people and we love the German people. But in fact, what, the, what they do and what they did is like terrorizing 
the Korean people and the German people. It's all lies, you know. Politicians mostly say what we want to hear. You know, they're all liars, including Mr. Putin, all of them, all of them, all the politicians. They're all a bunch of liars. They tell us what we want to hear. So here, here did he go, here he went to school. He even spoke Swiss German. And you know, for speaking Swiss German, you have to learn German first. You know, nobody just... I know Germans, you know, I've been here for 20 years, they don't speak a word of Swiss German. Because it's, it's, you won't understand it. Well, the Germans do. But... Yeah, here it says, basketball. This is what he used to do here in his time off. So this is how they did it, you know. Um, a Swiss woman, she marries or she gets a child with a Korean guy. The guy, he gets sent back to his country. So don't make any children with any Swiss women because there's a very big chance you would never see your child again. And uh, then... Uh, so the child is going to be raised in a Swiss manner. If the child is a girlie, she's going to marry or she's going to have a child with another Korean. And the child will be already... will be already much more... much more... Uh, the child will already much, be much more uh, um, Asian looking and uh, same thing again, the father will be sent away, never sees his child again. So, um, inside it's completely Swiss. You know. Well, this is one of the sporting grounds. He used to play basketball, it doesn't look like basketball here, yeah, it's probably somewhere else. So this is still the school. So after five generations, you know, the, uh, the offspring looks like Korean as any Korean. But inside, you know, it's Swiss. This is what they do, did in the U.S. This is what they did in uh, in Germany, always. Yeah. So this is the school where Mr. Kim Jong-in in Lieberfeld or Konitz, where he went to school. And uh, he left 2000. It's, only, it's not very long ago. We well, spend like seven years in Switzerland. Well, why Switzerland, you know? Why Swiss? A dictator of Korean, he speaks Swiss German. Better than English. <laughs> well, usually they don't show it. It probably came out, which I didn't like very much, you know? So, yeah. This is the, the, white, the white nigger system. Excuse me, my word. I don't believe like this, you know? So, oh, this is why he played basketball, Mr. Kim Jong-un. So he spent like seven years, or I don't know, playing basketball here. Yeah, you imagine? Yeah. And all his brothers and sisters, two brothers and one sister, I think, they all went to school in, in Switzerland, in Geneva, Lausanne, and in Bern. So uh, he didn't even go to a, like an international school. He did in the beginning. So he completely switched to a Swiss school. But they speak like only Swiss German. <clears throat> Looks nice and clean, you know. Looks peaceful, but it isn't. No. You imagine? Not so long ago, the dictator of Korea has been playing basketball here. I'll show you where he lived as well. coming up. Yeah. Well. Kim, can I play some basketball? Yeah. So it's 
Well, he was, huh? Can you imagine uh, Mr. Kim Jong Un sitting here, chilling out, you know, drinking his energy drink or I don't know what, his Coke, sitting here, the dictator of North Korea in Switzerland? Yeah. I mean, nobody would choose like a, a school in Switzerland where they speak Swiss German. Well, I mean, the, the entire financial elite and nobility, they all go to schools like in, in Switzerland, but they go to international schools, not a school where they speak Swiss German. They probably always have been speaking Swiss German, you know. So here's the other side of the school then. So there's the school again from the other side. Some nice, it's nice and green. Some nice mountains behind here. So it says to Steinholzli. That way the dictator went to school. It's a little nice, isn't it? So here's the street, Hildegard Street, where the uh, the school is there, where the dictator went to school. So this is where he lived, this here, and uh, just next to the school, probably a five minutes walk, or well, not even. It means the church street number ten. Just wonder. There's some more Koreans living here now, probably. So here's a wine cellar here. I don't know what it is. We have shots around. So this is where the dictator of North Korea lived. So if he turns left there, and then right, and immediately left, that's a school. It's maybe it's two minutes. So there's number ten. This is where he walks in. Uh, turn left here, and then right, and the school is there where the where the trees are, where the trees are. Quite near. And this is the big street here. This one went to his house there. Here, right. And here he went to school. And there were the shallies, he turned left, or probably some way here in between. It's what well, you can do it in one minute. So this is where the dictator lived. A pharmacy. Some friendly Swiss people. Yeah, look at them. A zombie. Cheeseburger, McDonald's. A pizza restaurant. Yeah. This is called the white nigger system. Excuse me the expression, my black brothers. I'm totally on your side. So outside black or Korean in this case and inside white and Swiss. So a Swiss woman finds herself a Korean, have a mixed child and the Korean father either dies or gets extradited and never sees his child again, which gets raised by octagon. Then, if it's a girl, she finds herself some Korean again, and the same technique gets reproduced, only this time the fruit of the second generation looks much more Korean, that is, from the outside only. Then, three more similar generations, and the outcome looks like real Korean, like Kim Jong Un. But the inside is what? Well, yes, white. And he even speaks Swiss German. <laughs> so it must be assumed that all the 800 participants of the GCSP program in Geneva are all the result of the white nigger system, which, by the way, had been experimented a lot too in the Nazi concentration camps, the Lebensborn program, and surely the North Korean concentration camps. 
but the idea is much older and dates back to the days of Pharaoh. So you better not make any children with a Swiss, cause chances are fairly high you'll never see your beloved child again, as I had to find out the hard way. And no Swiss legal system will abide by the laws, as they were supposed to in octagon of lawlessness and Nazi Templar rule. You know, it's all about human processing, you know, by uh, its eugenics and um, having a farmed human race by the... Uh, by some certain Swiss laws of, uh, of modeling mankind. Now, just look at the facts. Now, why would a North Korean dictator speak Swiss German, spend seven years in a normal Swiss school, and send his army officers for some war and assault rifle training at some bogus Geneva NGO? Well, here he is, Leonardo Conti, the, uh, the head of the Lebensborn and the farming of the human race and, you know, doing the, the black nigger, the white nigger uh, program as well, you know, and, and having total control over human bodies and making a mix and, and all sorts of experiments. And this guy was Swiss. This is Octagon. He was the Reich Minister of Health and a Nazi general. An SS general. He was Swiss, Leonardo Conti, um, having total control over human bodies and doing all all these sort of things. You know, this, this is behind um, the Korean leader uh, speaking Swiss German. You know, Leonardo Conti, a Swiss uh, Nazi general working for the Lebensborn. That's what I'm telling you about. This is the real force behind it all. The farming of the human... Uh, of, of mankind as a farmed race. Well, there he is again. Leonardo Conti and the origins of the Nazi genocide. And, and you may live, you may not live, you know. It's all Swiss. It's from Switzerland. It's Octogon. Uh, see my other film on the Swiss sadist uh, Leonardo Conti. And the same thing. This is a, now it's all related with North Korea, and the same thing happening there. So this is in Konitz. It's real near to Kim Jong Un from Switzerland. <laughs> Sixteen hundred and ten, with the famous, like the Swiss Templars cross. So I just showed you the card was full. There's the bear, like the Blackwater sign, you know, with the uh, with the barefoot Schwarzwasser. Uh, was that serpents? So this is in the same uh, town like, well it is all burned but very near to where the dictator lived. It's a sort of a part of a sort of castle which is there. Templars. Obelisk with the world domination and the devil. Always next to the water for Isis. Very old church. So this is all next to where the dictator, where the dictator lived. So let's have a look at that grave there. It says Baumeister. That's a title in a uh, Freemason lodge, Baumeister. Nobility. I don't know what that is. Uh, it looks like uh, it looks very occult, you know, with the two. 
pillars. I don't know what that is. Ja, ihr habt auch nun Traurigkeit, aber ich will euch wiedersehen und euer Herz soll sich freuen. So they're talking about the resurrection and the uh, uh, like life after. Baumeister, ja, yeah, like means a mason. And by the way, Switzerland too had eugenics institutes practicing forced sterilization on young healthy people until 1996 and children slaves in concentration camps until 1989 who were raped, beaten to death and starved to death just as in North Korea. They were called the Verdinkenda. So you can, I'll put it in the links for you. It says 1950 or something. Well, well that's not true. They did it until 1989. Octogon has their dirty little fingers in any crime against humanity. In the past, now, and the turmoils to come.